So today I'll be going over how you can do well on the MCAT. I'll give you a plan, a schedule, and materials uh, that I used that helped me go from a 505 to a 516. So whether you've already taken it and you want to increase your score, or you're new to the MCAT and you're looking for materials um, and just a, a foot in the door of where to start off, um, for both audiences, this is perfect for you. Uh, so first off, uh, I took the MCAT in August. And uh, August 2019, I scored a 516. However, a year ago before that, in June of 2018, I scored a 505. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't prepare the, uh, correctly the first time around. Um, I even put a decent amount of time, but the way that I was studying just was not good. And uh, I figured out how to approach the MCAT systematically. So first off, the materials that I used the second time around for the 516 uh, I used Berkeley Review for the scheduling. I'll discuss that more in a moment. I also used exam crackers primarily for the practice tests. And I also used the AMC uh, sources. So first off, with the Berkeley Review, there's a few different weekly scheduling formats that they have. They have a 12-week um, schedule, a 14-week schedule, and a 16-week schedule. So this is the 14-week schedule that I recommend that you use. Um, basically it goes over, you'll do content review one day, the same day you'll then do practice problems on that content that you just learned. It will then reinforce the content that you originally learned a day or two after, and then reinforce it again about a week after the first time you reviewed it. Uh, each time you reinforce the information, it's through practice passages. So my unique method of, of using the Berkeley Review was to use the Berkeley Review schedule and their content, but when it, when it came down to practicing, um, and reinforcing the material, I used exam crackers 101 passages for the sciences. Now, I'll tell you why. The first time I took the MCAT, I had dabbled in exam crackers practice. When it came down to sitting for the actual exam, I found exam crackers uh, by far reflected the MCAT the most, by far. Um, their style of ans uh, asking questions, their passage style, and um, their difficulty is all almost identical to the uh, AMC format and style. So I recommend using exam crackers. Uh, now for the the Berkeley review schedule, you're going to want to you're going to have to become a little creative. So uh, when it, when you do have to do the passages, uh, the practice passages, you have to kind of match up the content that you already learned with the exam crackers test. Um, it's pretty easy. Uh, you know, it just takes a tiny bit more time, but it's it's well worth it in the end. Um, by far. Now, in addition to using the uh, exam crackers and Berkeley Review, I also used AMC sources. AMC, of, of course, is um, the closest thing you'll get to the actual exam. Uh, they have a few, they have a bunch of full lengths. They also have um, index cards. You're going to want to do uh, look at every index card. You're going to want to do every question bank. Um, specifically with cars, you're going to want to do the the cars question bank multiple times. I would recommend doing the question bank. Um, towards the uh, end of your four four months of studying. Um, and that brings me into the next point that I want to go over, is to save yourself ample amount of time to get through um, all your studies. You're going to want to get um, more than enough practice tests uh, before you actually sit for the exam. So I recommend uh, studying and taking practice exams. You're going to want to do full commitment, full time, preparation for the MCAT for at least five to six months at the very minimum. Um, during those five to six months, uh, you're going to want, you, while you're following the Berkeley Review, towards the end of the three months, the, or the 14-week schedule, at, towards the end of those three months, you're going to start to incorporate more and more full lengths. Um, I recommend doing the exam crackers full lengths. And uh, while you're following the Berkeley Review, you're going to be doing a full length about once a week. After you finish the Berkeley Review, uh, you'll still have approximately two more months. Um, so the Berkeley Review is about three months. You're going to want to study at least five to six. So you'll have a, an additional two months um, before you sit, another additional three months before you sit, depending on if you do five or six months of preparation. Um, during those extra two to three months, after you can fully complete the Berkeley Review, it has to be in a full-length exam every other day. Now. 
that might that might seem extreme, but it's it's so important to get used to the timing, to get used to um, the preparation um, the night before, getting a good night's sleep, um, what you're going to eat for dinner, and then every other day you're going to be taking a full length. So that means you have to start at eight o'clock, um, and finish. Uh, you'll be finished. It's it's about seven and a half hours. Um, you want to take your full break, so you know you'll be finishing around. I, I believe I was finishing around, you know, three thirty in the afternoon. Um, right after you finish, you'll have to then just review over that test. The next day, you finish reviewing over that full length, and then the day after that, you take another full length, and you keep doing these. So, exam crackers. Uh, they may have six or seven full lengths. Um, they're a bit more pricey than others. I think they're about $40 each. However, the exam crackers full lengths are probably the most difficult, um, but the, the actual test is very difficult. It's very similar in difficulty. Um, their formatting is a little different, just the web interface. Um, you shouldn't be discouraged by that. You know, the AMC and, and a bunch of other companies, I think um, Next Step also does a good one. They all have very similar interfaces um, as compared to AMC. Um, but exam crackers, they have a different uh, interface format. Don't get discouraged. They're, they're perfect. They're golden for your, um, to get a, a really difficult test um, and get getting used to being exposed to a lot of data and abstract equations. That was so similar to the actual test that I took. Um, my test, I will, I remember taking the exam crackers uh, full lengths and seeing the most bizarre equations on those passages, and so many in a single passage that I've never seen, and then the, then having questions that require um, assimilating all the equations conceptually. And I remember thinking, there's no way this could be on the test. Well, sure enough, my second um, passage on the chem and physics section was dealing with sound and ultrasound and um, you know wave equations. Uh, it incorporated trigonometry, long equations, um, cosine sine. It was. It had multiple, multiple um, equations thrown at you, and it was. It was very tricky. Um, but I, I didn't panic. I was. I felt um, prepared, and that's what exam crackers is best. Um, is is best at. It's best at preparing you so that you don't panic when you see the bizarre equations and passages on the actual test. Um, now. In addition to the exam crackers, that's that may be the best um, second party full length uh, out there. I would say the second one, second best is Next Step. They're they're also really good. Um, their difficulty level is definitely less than the exam crackers, um, but they also are similar to the actual test. So I would recommend Next Step. Um, I know the uh, gold standard uh, is also good. I think just their first full length is is a good one. Um, and really, the AMC full lengths are, are key to take. Uh, you can also um, then for the the month right before you sit for your test, if you're feeling confident on the full lengths, you can then start to. What I did at least was I started to do a full length once a week again, but I started to do uh, um, practice problems, and I was doing about 114, 115 questions a day. What I would do is I would do the 115 questions and then I would review them the same day. So, and I would do that every day. That would equal up to 230 questions of doing it timed and then reviewing in a single day. That would equal to 230 questions of a full length and reviewing those 230 in two days. So I was, I was, I kept that, um, that the question per day total the same, which is, is also very key. You're going to want to Keep a tally of how many questions you do each day. I would recommend doing um, writing down how many questions you did in each section, um, and you want to then total it up. And you want to almost keep beating that total amount of questions every day. That's your target. Every day is to get at least 115 questions. You know, answer answer them and review them. Um, it's all about getting a huge amount of practicing. You want to see every scenario you can possibly see. So then when you see a scenario that you've never seen, you're used to it because that's all you've been seeing, uh, if, you, if that makes sense. Uh, so when I started uh, doing more of the practice problems um, uh, sections, I, was, I did a lot of Khan Academy, which I, I felt uh, was really good in that they had some abstract um, passages that 
if you look at the comments, everyone was saying that no one would ask these kinds of questions. Well, sure enough, I had very similar questions on the actual test. Um, and I, I did a lot of the Khan Academy ones. And also UWorld. UWorld is perfect. It's so good. UWorld is, is absolutely essential during that last month because it allows you to um, you know, do timed practice, same difficulty as the actual test, very similar style. And afterwards, you, can, you have an in-depth review of each, each section. So this is, this is where you can then start to reinforce the concepts again right before your test. This is where you figure out what you're lacking a bit. Um, and when you see that in your in the questions that you got in wrong, you can then hone in um, perfectly through UWorld's format and interface. You can hone in perfectly on those those key topics that you're lacking on. So you have you should I highly recommend completing all of UWorld the month before your test, doing all that review, and then um, getting getting AMC really focusing on the AMC resources. Uh, you're about a week week and a half before your actual test, uh, maybe even two weeks. So, you know, this is a very rigorous schedule. Like I said, it has to be full time for you. And, um, and by the time that, you know, you take a, a full length and you're, and you're not happy with the score, it's not your goal score. And then you go to sit for the exam, you're going to most likely not get your goal score. So it's, it's super important to be realistic with yourself and to understand that um, there's a timeline and there's there you, you one of the best quotes I've ever heard was that you can't have a baby overnight. It's the same thing with the MCAT. You cannot force a good score if you're not getting those scores on practice exams. You have to just keep at it. But you don't want to go into the test if you're not ready. If you're not consistently getting that high score, even a high score on a third party company exam, you'll see a lot on online people saying that the third parties they're inflated a bit um, or deflated. You know they'll give you a lower score than it's than it actually is. Um, they're a little they're harder than the actual exam. I, I found that they are actually good predictors of what you'll get. Um, you know, maybe a point or two lower than than the actual. But again, the actual test is a lot harder than people give it credit. Um, so with all that in mind, it's it's super important to be able to take ten exams, full length exams, and score your goal score on eight out of ten exams. And it has to be eight in a row. Um, it could well actually it could be seven in a row or eight total, right? Um, out of ten, that was uh, that that was something that I didn't do the first time around. I think I did maybe six or seven full lengths the first time when I got the five hundred five. I got maybe my goal score on five out of those six, or maybe four out of those six. Um, and I figured, you know. I, I did get my goal score more times than I did it, so I think I'm ready. I wasn't. You know, uh, you want to you want to be very realistic with yourself. Um, there's no need to rush into it. You just need to take the full amount of time to consistently get that goal score. Um, now, in future videos, I'll be going more in depth with uh, the scheduling, what I did the night before the exam, um, what you should be doing. Uh, you know where to take your practice exams. And I'll definitely go into more detail about uh, how I broke up the total of like five or six months of my study time, um, really break it down and go more in depth with that. Also, I would love to answer questions on content review. Um, if you have any science questions, anything that's not clicking, I would, I would love to explore going into, um, you know, teaching some of the sciences because for the sciences, sciences, at least I scored 131 on the chem and physics section, the, the physical sciences first section, I scored 131, um, which is 99th percentile. And then for the bio and biochem, I scored 131 as well, um, also 99th percentile. So I, I do have a pretty good grasp on how the MCAT will ask certain chemistry, physics, orgo questions, um, how they apply it, uh, and really also like tips and tricks on even memorizing some of the equations. Uh, the key equations to know how to uh, derive constants. It's all very important. So future videos, I will definitely explore those avenues. Um, so uh, please like and subscribe. I'll be putting out more content and uh, I hope you enjoyed. Thank you.